Hey guys, what's up? It's Michael, and today I'm going to talk about how the Whole Life Challenge food rules work when it comes to popular diet choices like keto, paleo, vegan, or vegetarian, or plant-based, Mediterranean, low FODMAP, Atkins, The Zone, the list goes on and on. So the main thing to understand is that in the case of our rules, we're looking at the quality of food that you're eating, what it's made of, whether it's whole or processed, and if eating it leads to a particular general response in your body, a hormone response, a weight gain, or an inflammatory response, to be a little bit more specific. And that can overlay on any diet. Now some of the diets that I mentioned, things like paleo, Mediterranean, and low FODMAP, for example, are largely focused on the same kind of thinking. What are foods made of? Are they natural? Do they trigger a particular unwanted response in your body? Paleo, Mediterranean, and low FODMAP diets are totally compatible with the Whole Life Challenge rules, as are vegetarian, vegan, or plant-based diet. We even have specific lists for each level that are tailored for vegan and vegetarian needs. What's more is complying with them is well supported by the Whole Life Challenge accountability structure. And the paleo and Mediterranean diets were actually the inspiration or the models for our performance and lifestyle levels. Now, diets like the ketogenic diet, Atkins diet, or the zone diet have totally different focus, macronutrients or macros, protein, carbohydrates, and fat, and how those macros in a particular ratio create certain responses in your body, more specifically weight loss. Now, we don't count calories or macros in the Whole Life Challenge, and in an upcoming video, we'll talk about why not. So keep your eyes open for an upcoming video to get the full story on that. But back to the macro-based diets. Take, for example, the ketogenic diet, or keto. Super popular these days. Keto does not prescribe the quality of food for you to eat. It's a diet that prescribes a ratio of protein, carbohydrates, and fat to put you into what's known as a ketogenic state, a state where your body metabolizes fat to create something called ketone bodies or ketones. Ketones can be used in place of sugar or glucose metabolism for energy. Hence, it's a ketone generating or ketogenic diet. The Atkins diet, very similar, uses high fat and low carb foods to help mobilize fat burning in your body rather than relying on sugar metabolism. And this frees you up from eating high carb, insulin raising, potentially excess weight generating foods as a source of energy. The same goes for most low carbohydrate diets. Specifically, the ketogenic diet calls for you to eat about 70 to 80% of your calories from fat sources, foods like butter, oils, avocado, nuts, about 20% from protein, and 5 to 10% from carbohydrates. The quality of the food, whether it's natural or processed, or whether it's dairy or non-dairy, for example, is not as important as the macronutrient ratio in keto. So to be clear, there is no particular group of foods that is ketogenic. There are foods that are high or low in fat, higher low in protein, and higher low in carbohydrates. To be eating a ketogenic diet, you have to eat the foods in the right ratios to be generating ketones. The quality of the food, totally up to you. So as far as how the Whole Life Challenge meshes with something like keto, paleo, or even something much more specific like a low FODMAP diet, they work hand in glove. The Whole Life Challenge offers nutrition guidelines that help to narrow your food choices to high quality, natural, whole foods. There are plenty of foods in there that are high in fat. There are certainly plenty of protein sources and limiting calories you get from carbohydrates to five to 10% is easy, especially with our performance recommendations. Now, as far as something like a low FODMAP diet is concerned, it's a diet that removes what are known as fermentable, oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. Most of you will never need to remember that. But if someone has recommended a low FODMAP diet to you, you may already be familiar with the foods you need to remove from your diet. Foods like onions and garlic and broccoli, cauliflower, beans, lentils, bread, etc. because they cause you gas, bloating, discomfort, and irritation. Now if you notice something here, it might be that many of these foods are already on the Whole Life Challenge non-compliant list for most levels. Additional foods being removed from your non-compliant list, foods like high FODMAP fruits and vegetables, is an easy thing to do. Because most importantly, the Whole Life Challenge is an accountability program that holds you to the choices you commit to, the decisions that you make for your health and well-being. So if you're committing yourself to a ketogenic diet, you can eat high quality, high fat, moderate protein, and low carbohydrate foods that are on the Whole Life Challenge compliant food lists. Now, 
Some people feel they need to incorporate dairy like cream or cheese into a ketogenic diet. That may be the case for you. If it is, adapting the food rules slightly to match your goals is totally acceptable. They're your goals. However, it might also be worth experimenting to see if you can achieve a ketogenic state without dairy as well. It's completely possible. Now, if your doctor or nutritionist has put you on a low FODMAP diet, you can create your custom list by removing any additional foods that are irritating and use that for your daily food list. If the Mediterranean diet is for you, you can use our lifestyle level as your guide. And if you need to make an adjustment or two to make it fit what is Mediterranean to you, you can do that. You can limit red meat, for example, or even include a glass of red wine each day. So when you're looking at our food levels, remember that our focus is on the quality of the foods you eat, just like paleo, Mediterranean, or low FODMAP diets. When it comes to quantity-based diets, diets that focus on numbers, things like portions, calories, or macros, like the keto or other low-carb diets, the Whole Life Challenge has no conflict with that idea. The Whole Life Challenge simply adds a level of quality control to the quantity choices that you are making. And even if the quality assessment that we offer is unimportant to you and you want to eat keto on your terms, the accountability structure the Whole Life Challenge offers you is a support in sticking to the foods that are most likely to put you in that ketogenic state and staying away from the ones that will knock you out of it. Because no matter what choices you're making in upgrading your lifestyle, temptation is always there and accountability will always help. So that's it on the whole life challenge and the popular diets that you might already be checking out or involved with. Let us know in the comments what you think and if you follow a particular diet while doing the whole life challenge. So keep your eye out for more videos and I will see you next time.